So good night. Día de recolección de residuos. Bye. Bye. I think we only going to be you and me. Personal classes. <laughs> And the second, uh, we will get, uh, give the three minutes in order to, to okay. the, the rest of the uh, so Can one. you fix your microphone? It's doing like a noise. Again. Yeah, I'm I sorry. Try. I will try. And if it's not working, I'm just going to restore it. What about now? What what happened if you plug and you unplug in? I already did. I'm so sorry. It's okay. And now we can hear you. Yeah, with the same problem. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I right now it's raining around the uh, the country for the reason many of you or classmates cannot be. On time for the reason we would uh, start it like at 8.03. Okay, guys, uh, to start with this class, I know we already end at the second four. Uh, some of you uh, already started the section five, and another one has been already finalized in the section five final exam. Uh, but today we will make a review about the section four, and also uh, we will try to start with the section five. Okay, it's time to start. Yesterday, if I not mistake, uh, one of your classmates let me know. This one. Was a uh, with one of the aims that it was difficult for you. And let me ask you, this. would you like to watch again the video before continue with the section five? Example using it. You can get a repair shop to fix your. Hello, ready to begin? I want to remind you that in English we can say the same idea in another way. Does active and passive voice ring a bell? Stay and find out. Page 59, exercise 3. Grammar focus. Have or get something done. Use have or get to describe a service performed for you by someone else. Active. Do you know where I can have someone fix my bike? You can have Hazel's personal services fix your bike. You can get a repair shop to fix your bike. Passive. Do you know where I can have my bike fixed? You can have your bike fixed by Hazel's personal services. You can get your bike fixed at a repair shop. I know this is not new for you. Active and passive, remember? We have told you that in English we may say the same sentence in another way. This time we will learn how to use active and passive using have or get to describe a service performed for you by someone else. As always, let's work on active first. You can have a repair shop fix your bike. We're using have plus someone plus base form of the verb. Let's type an example using get. You can get a repair shop to fix your bike. Get plus someone plus infinitive verb. Moving on, we have passive. 
You can have or get your bike fixed. It's optional to ride at or by a shop. Have or get plus object plus past participles. It's optional to use at or by. I want you to work in class. I want you to talk about two things you want to have done. Remember, you may type your answers on our discussion box. Okay, guys. Uh, I know that many of you have some difficulties or wonders in this. We are very much uh, like a second time, and what I would like to ask if you right now, what do you think about this video? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, so so. I can hear you, but sometimes I can't understand because you have a noise on your microphone. What about the rest? What about the rest? Did you hear me? Good, oh, bad, so so. You have an, an interference in when you speak. What about now? Yeah, you fix it. Okay, can you pro uh, provide me? What do you think about this time or the, about this video, please? Nobody wants to say nothing. Okay, thank you guys. I appreciate so much for the participation. I guess uh, anybody got any any question about the aims, uh, we will continue with the section five, okay? Well, to start with section five, I will play a video. Please pay attention. To finish this course, we want you to sit, relax, and watch the last video with us. Feel free to take notes as you watch it. Finally from us, the virtual office. For better or worse, technology and globalization are creating startling changes in what it means to be on the job. Betsy Stark is tracking the new order of business, and tonight begins our series, The Future of Work. Imagine a work world with no commute, no corporate headquarters, maybe no office in the physical world at all. For Bob Flavin, Janet Hoffman, and Joseph Jaffe, the future is already here. These days we do so much stuff by teleconferences and things. Um, that it doesn't matter where you are. Like 42% of IBM's 350,000 employees, Bob Flavin rarely comes into an IBM office. We don't care where and how you get your work done. We care that you get your work done. On the day we met him, he was collaborating with computer scientists in British Columbia and Beijing from the on-call room of his local ambulance corps, where he works as a volunteer. You are in 6031. The workforce at the Accenture management consulting firm is so mobile, not even the CEO has an office with his name on the door. There's no corporate headquarters. No. If you need a workspace, you reserve it like a hotel room, checking in and out at a kiosk. 
Having a big desk is a sign of status with lots of family photos and, uh, you know, and, and carpeting that's fluffy and nice. Is, uh, that is, is a vision of the past. Come on into the theater. In the future, more companies with scattered workforces and clients may do what the crayon marketing firm has done and make their headquarters in cyberspace. Here's our little rooftop. We had our holiday party here. Crayon's workers rarely meet in the physical world. I am uh, in Boston today. And I am on Long Island today. But their alter egos in the virtual world gather once a week. We're here in, uh, in our boardroom, and uh, you're here actually at the tail end of a status meeting. I never met Crayon's CEO in person. There you are. But we spent a couple of hours together in cyberspace. Our belief is that if we bring like minds together, no matter where they are in the world, we can actually create that connectedness as if we're actually here at the same place at the same time. If what matters is what you do, not where you are, who needs an office? Betsy Stark, ABC News, Crayonville in cyberspace. And tomorrow, imagine having summers off every summer. That is World News for this Monday. I'm Kate Snow. For Charles Gibson and all of us at ABC News, have a good evening. Good night. Are you there, teacher? No. Yeah, you have problem again with your mic. Okay, guys, uh, right now we'll continue with the next topic. In this class, you will listen to conversation about work history. Notice how they make reference to the time past. Well, guys, it's time to start with the past. Please pay attention with the next video. Join us in the last section of this course. We want you to answer the following questions. Number one, do you know when World War I began? How long has the United Nations been in existence? How long were the Beatles together for? If you really know the answers, type them in. I'm good at history. Part A. Listen and practice. Look, here's a quiz on events of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a try. I'm good at history. All right. First question. When did World War I begin? I think it began in 1917. Huh. And how long has the United Nations been in existence? Uh, since Kennedy became president in 1961. Hmm. Next question. How long were the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1980, so they were together for 15 years. So, how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. We want you to stay and listen to the rest of the conversation and find out the correct answers for the questions we asked at the beginning. So, what are the correct answers then? Well, World War I began in 1914 and ended in 1918. Oh, that's right. And the United Nations was formally established in 1945 following the end of World War II. And the Beatles? Well, they started back in 1960, and they broke up in 1970. So they were together for 10 years, not 15. Did I say I was good at history? Uh, I meant geography. Okay, guys, what do you think about the video? The first video was so interesting because uh, nowadays many companies are doing the same about uh, the remote work from the from home or from wherever the people are. Thank you so much for participation, maybe. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I I understand in this video, in the second video, that for referring to time in past, we have three three times. Uh, a point of time in the past, 
a period of time that continues and a period of time in the past when we use from to and for. What about the rest? I like the way that we have we can use um, the past in different ways, and even the preposition is something important important because uh, you can use like a in on during from uh, things. So that's something important because if you can like match this um, this word. Uh, you will be in trauma. <laughs> Thank you so much, Randy. I have a new to participation too. So well, all of you here have been already right. It was great. And, but I am so interested in what about the rest, guys. Please, I need to listen to you in the, on, the, on the class. Can you participate, please? Can you share your ideas? Yeah, we can learn. Uh... We will learn about how to use them, referring to the time. So much, maybe, but I would like to listen, for example, uh, Jaime, Maximo, Vanessa, Jamie Lopez, may I know your, your thoughts about this video? Hi, teacher, you with me. With me. Uh, I think, this video is uh, a bit related with the past topic and because it is related to memorizing things and the girl were sorry the girl was questioning the boy and he said that he was good at history but in fact he was not because no one answer of, of him was was correct so I think it's important to to improve our memory to do exercises in order to have a, a better a better memory, I think. Thank you so much, Jaime. <clears throat> Thank you so much for your participation. What about the rest? The rest of the class that has been not participated yet. What do you think about those videos? What about you, Vanessa, Morena, Maximo, Jancy? What do you think about those videos, guys? I am waiting for you. Uh, what your ideas and your opinion about the this, this video? Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate so much uh, the conviction about this class and the topic. Well, guys, uh, for the rest of the class, let me tell you, you are right. We will learn many ways in order to speak. This is the first one. And this is another one. See here, guys. Both express class. Uh, what is the message if I express this one? Okay, Jesse, can you let me know, please? What is the message if I use where? Excuse me? What is the message that I use where? But what is the difference between this one and this one? Teacher, a mí me aparece la pantalla en negro. Espérame. No, it's okay, teacher. Okay. Watch again. No, a mí. No. 
it's so interesting since what time can uh, cannot see your screen mm, see i just listened the video but no i didn't, I didn't. oh you didn't pay attention okay thank you yancy thank you so much yeah for so much that okay what about the rest guys please please pay attention Okay, if you need that I make a little bit more dynamic the class, I can do it, but I need guys, please. I am begging you, your participation. Always, always listen, Jansen, Brandy, and, uh, and maybe, I'm also a high man, participant. What about the rest guys? Please, I need your participation for today. Okay, I will ask it to you again. Watch this one. What is the difference between them? In the first sentence, uh, it's for the begins. Okay. And in the second, I understand that. Uh, uh, in the second is for um, how is the period of time that the Beatles during with a band? Okay, you are so close to this, uh, and a person must be participation again. Thank you so much for everybody that participated. Okay, the first one, as we learn from the present. I can understand, thank you. Teacher, the, the first question uh, refers to a specific date oh, yeah, or a specific time. And the second one is for how much time? Yes. Also, you're agree with that, thank you, maybe, uh, but I will try to focus on the mobile verb. Okay. As in present, the mobile verb B is for action when we do. And what about the where? Where is the pass of the B? That means that we will speak about someone that was in the past. But as maybe Julissa mentioned, the first one, the first structure, will be for a specific time, a specific, a specific period of time. It will be, it will be a specific year, month, day, etc. But what about the second one? The second one, we, are, we don't really know how or what is the time, a period of time. We are talking about for that reason we will use this structure how long at the beginning okay and a second if you see your guys So that what is the way to answer? Okay, we can answer the second question in this way. They were together for 15 years. We can go quickly to the point, straight to the point. Answer just that part. But if you want to add more details, you can do it. But also, in simple past. I will try to say in Spanish so that you can understand it a little better. Solo in this paragraph, guys, as you said, there are more than one way to express time. There are periods of time specific, like the first. Hay periodos de tiempo que nosotros no sabemos exactamente cuánto, cuánto es, por lo tanto estamos preguntándolo de esta manera, lo desconocemos. Muy bien. 
si el periodo de tiempo es largo, vamos a ocupar esta otra estructura. Pero ¿qué pasa si nosotros no queremos ser exactamente específicos? Queremos agregar más información a la respuesta. Muy bien, podemos ocupar simple pressure. Simple pass. ¿Qué sería? Subject. Very pass. And complex. Yes, Randy, do you have any doubt or questions? No, I mean, I don't understand when you say something because I can hear a noise. That made me feel headache. I understand here, but it's just your microphone. Okay, but the rest teacher, of the people didn't teacher, say yeah. anything. It's a sound, it's a sound very, um, I don't know, how can I tell you? But uh, we hear <laughs> your <laughs> microphone <laughs> falso noise. Algo. Uh -huh, maybe. Y me lo vienes diciendo, bueno, le dice me lo dijo Brandy, guys. Pero ustedes me lo vienen diciendo 26 minutos después de la clase. Les Pero se entiende, teacher. Pero sí se teacher, entiende. Una pregunta, teacher. teacher, una pregunta en el diálogo que estábamos viendo. Al final, en la cuarta línea dice, I be begin. Eh, When the, decía when when where the second word be, I begin ¿por qué dice el pronombre I begin al final? No, it's first first word word no. first and the, after that first question alright, first question when the word war I began part uh -huh. one War one is a number. As when did war where I begin? Okay. Eh, se lo voy a explicar de esta forma, señor Raúl. Como lo dijo Maybe, este no viene siendo como el sujeto yo. No. Ese viene siendo un número romano. World War ah, ya, ya War. entendí, teacher, perdón, lo había confundido el like con el número romano. It's okay. Sometimes sí, ya entendí, gracias. Ok, guys. Por favor, eh, se los pido. Sean sinceros y procuren participar un poco más. Si el audio le dificulta, al menos Brandy me lo dijo al inicio de la, llamada, de la clase, pero el resto no menciona nada. Es más, te hice la primera pregunta y su respuesta fue, no, no estaba viendo el vídeo, solo estaba viendo la clase. Okay. Por favor, si lo estoy pidiendo, por favor, participemos un poco más y sé. Hay dificultades, y escuchen que uno de sus compañeros que ha subido las dificultades, Díganme si ustedes también están teniendo. Porque, o sea, yo puedo venir y dar toda la clase durante toda la hora. Y no me va a importar, o sea, que aprendan o no. Pero no es ese el punto. Una de mis metas es que ustedes dupliquen todas las habilidades que tienen. O si es posible que la tripliquen cuando comenzaron el módulo. Esto, por favor, necesito más participación y que sean un poco más honestos. Escuchen como ejemplo, Brandy, que tiene dificultades con el audio, que escucha la interferencia, lo dijo. Pues díganlo, hey, yo también lo escucho. No tengan pena, nadie me va a decir nada al respecto. Ok, guys. Continuando con, la, con el video, as we already see can find here at least three structure to speak in past. The second one is with verb in past. And the third one is when we use Using the 
subject, and then it's very fast. Practice. Uh, I meant geography. Not 15, not 15. Did I say I was good at history? How long were the Beatles together? Five, and broke up in 1980, so they were together for 15 years. So, how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. We want you to stay and listen to the rest of the conversation and find out the correct answers for the questions we asked at the beginning. So, what are the correct answers then? Well, World War I began in 1914 and ended in 1918. Oh, that's right. And the United Nations was formally established in 1945 following the end of World War II. And the Beatles? Well, they started back in 1960 and they broke up in 1970. So they were together for 10 years, not 15. Did I say I was good at history? Uh, I meant geography. Hey guys, what do you think about the second part? The part that we cannot watch the, the conversation. The guy wasn't not good at history. He failed in all his answers. What the happened? What about the rest? What do you think about the what? Okay, guys, the rest of you. What do you think about this video? Thank you guys uh, for so much. In this common phrase, we will continue. Uh, maybe can you read this, please? At the end of this class, participants will be able to refer to time in the past using different ways. Thank you, maybe. We'll play a video in order to understand a little bit more about the time in past. Hi, we want to go back in time. We will explain how we can refer to it. Don't go and stay for the explanation. Get ready. Referring to time in the past. A point of time in the past. When did World War II take place? During the 1940s. In the 1940s. Over 60 years ago. A period of time in the past. How long were the Beatles together? From 1960 to 1970. For 10 years. A period of time that continues into the present. How long has the United Nations been in existence? Since 1945. Since World War II ended. For about the last 60 years. When we want to talk about a point of time in the past, we may use the words in, ago, during. I will give you some examples using a timeline. Rock and roll became popular about 50 years ago. Disco became a craze in 1975. Madonna was on the music scene during the 1990s. A period of time that continues into the present, using since and for. The United Nations has existed since 1945. The United Nations has existed for over 60 years. Remember, we use since plus a point of time. Example, since last year, since Tuesday. And we use for plus a length of time. For example, for two weeks, for three hours. A period of time in the past using from two and four. World War I lasted from 1914 to 1918. World War II lasted for four years. After the explanation, we want you to type examples using a... Okay, guys, we will continue. Uh, 
guys. Let me place this one. In this video, guys, we will learn free time expressions. For example, I know that you already find the theme, but I would like to show you this one. Maybe this one. Okay, guys, the first expression is thin. The next expression was a thin. Thin is when we are talking about the next specific time. I think it would be the most general, but it can be said. ¿Cuánto puede abarcar in? Puede abarcar dos semanas, un mes, un año, una década, incluso en juega son centenarios. ¿Qué hay de las demás? O sea, las demás no están en el video, pero también nos van a servir para poder hablar en pasado. Si queremos hablar en un círculo más cerrado, vamos a ocupar on. Esto abarca días o weekends, cortos periodos de tiempo, incluso vacaciones. On vacation, no decimos in vacation, on vacation. Y a es cuando hablamos sobre specific, horas específicas. Si yo le pregunto a usted, señor Raúl, a qué hora se levanta, a qué hora me dirige usted. At 6 o'clock. I wake up at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I get up at 6 o'clock. Y Cristina, para este sí vamos a ocupar tanto el o'clock como los minutos. Esta es la primera que, que, que quiero que se deje apretar. In, on, and out. ¿Podemos ocuparlo para hablar en presente? Sí. ¿Podemos ocuparlo para hablar en pasado? Sí. Podemos ocupar los teachers para hablar de location. Ah, sí, también. Y apliquen las mismas reglas. Ahora bien, pasemos a la clase. ¿Qué sigue después? Ok. A go. When we use a go, it's a time frame that something happened and end in that moment. Or no in that moment, in that period. For a point of time in the past, we may use the words in, ago, during. Como por ejemplo, digámoslo así. Uh, maybe after the third. Morena. Uh, when did you start working on your, on your work? On your job. Shh. Okay. <laughs> How many times? When? I have. I have been working in my jobs since. Oh. You are doing great. Ok, lo está haciendo bien, Morena, pero okay. a, a diferencia de lo que quiera hacer, usted se está pasando, saltando un sí. paso. O sea, lo está haciendo muy bien. Usted está ocupando things y también lo vamos a ocupar, si se fija aquí. Ok, I have been working in my actual job since 2012. Ah. Uh, 2012. Uh-huh. Okay. This until is a... now. No. Mm -hmm. You can say until now. But if you say since, that means that that action it has been already continued until today. Okay. 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 Okay.
podemos ocupar until y poner otro periodo, otro año, lo podemos hacer, o until today. También lo podemos ocupar. Uh -huh. okay. Ahora bien, lo que quería ocupar o quería ponerlo era este, el algo. Podemos decir su mismo idea de que usted comenzó a trabajar 12 uh -huh. años. Hace 12 años podemos decirlo. As I have been working uh, 12 years. 12 years ago. Maybe you can use the past simple, right? The simple past. Mm -hmm. She started. I start work. I start working. Morena. Has. No. Start work. Start work. Work. Working. Working. Okay. Un nombre 30, de una empresa. Um, Banana Republic, pongamos. Uh -huh. Esto lo podemos cambiar, obviamente, por el nombre de su trabajo. Intentaré decirlo así. Lo que usted me dijo está bien. Usted comenzó a trabajar allá en el 2012. Eso sería hace 11 años, ¿no? 11 años. Usted lo puede decir como me lo había dicho, por ejemplo. Como güey. Morena. Bien. Working. Bien. Nowadays. What's the meaning of nowadays, guys? What significa nowadays? Today. Actually, now. Actually, right now. Actually. On this day. Mm -hmm. On this day. We use. All right. When we use nowadays, ahora en día, así se puede traducir. Until now, o nowadays, es como hasta ahora en día. Puedo decirle just now, teacher, ya, 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 Si se fijan, es el mismo, el mismo meaning, but in different ways to say it. In the first one, we don't say the year, but we said the amount of year that Morena has been working. But in the second one, we mentioned the year and also until today. But we don't mention the specific amount of year that Monea has been working. And we we'll use in the first one simple past, and then and the other one past participle. Si se fijan, hay diferentes formas para poderlo decir. Sí, yo lo sé, Banana Republic. Eh, Use eso porque no sé dónde trabaja nuestra compañera y también tratando de editar el paneo de los videos. Okay. Teacher, can I use scenes with past continuous? She was working since no. Right. Ok. En past continuous, using the structure subject plus ver, model ver B plus gerunds. Yes. Yeah. Ella está Ahí trabajando de... Este. No se podría. Porque, por este, es un... En ese podría... Whatever. Es una acción continua. Si sí podemos ocupar otro tipo de expresión. Por ejemplo, voy a poner ejemplo. Yancy was working. Thank <laughs> you. 
pay. <risa> Sin pago, pensé que iba a poner. No, yo soy tan explotador. Okay. Fíjense aquí. Estamos hablando también del pasado, pero un pasado continuo. ¿Por qué? Porque tú sí estuviste moviendo, haciendo las cosas. ¿Ya terminó eso? Sí. Porque tú ya, tú ya no estás trabajando eso, es periodo de tiempo. Pero para poder explicar el periodo de tiempo, nosotros ocupamos por. Si tú quieres ocupar el pasado continuo, por. En algo, cuerpo o algo. Ok, algo. Algo lo ocuparemos ocupar con un simple present. Ah, es el same right. Ejemplo. Let's start to work in on. Y aquí obviamente vamos a poner el lugar donde trabajo. Fijas lo que ocupé on para especificar el periodo de tiempo. Como te lo pones aquí. Aquí okay. es cierto, un hecho. Un pequeño, yo sé que esta es una de estas. Pero, como se está refiriendo a un específico periodo de tiempo que no es tan tan grande, vamos a ocupar on. Eso lo pone al inicio de, de, de esto. Al inicio de esto. Hasta aquí ya está exactamente. Es el típico de pegar aquí es el fin de semana y aunque el periodo fue, fue 11 años pero estoy diciendo un poco específico estoy diciendo cuál es la cantidad de años bien yo share yo share this imagen on the whatsapp group please I, I will do it maybe I will do it don't worry esa, esa pirámide que usted mira de on skin on and at es un resumen de tiempo que deberíamos de manejar porque es lo que más frecuentamos hacer Ahora bien, el algo es como hace tanto tiempo pasó ¿cuántos años han pasado ya en sí desde ¿Tú usaste el uniforme? ¿Youtube? You use uniform. How many times? Oh. Bueno. Mm, well. Pero me dejé más de la cuenta. <laughs> y te voy a ayudar poniendo el inicio de la presente. Well, I've been, I've been using my uniform, no, uniform, um, for 12 years. It's okay. Since when? Since 2007, I think. Two thousand seven. I stopped. I stopped. I want to wear uniform, teacher. <laughs> okay, supongamos. Since last year, right? Two years ago.
I stopped using Sugar Park since two years ago. Okay, in the video, it's a little más como ocupar el algo, porque el algo lo ocupamos como hace tantos años. Nosotros ponemos desde hace cuántos años. Muy bien. Voy a poner aquí dentro de año. El coche lo dejaste de ocupar. Suponete que lo he dejado de ocupar. Pausa. 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 I stop to use Unimor Six. Pausa. Okay, this is another way that you can express the same idea about the unit. Let's see if not use Unicorn for two years. Okay, here what I want to give you is the same what we learned in the last three weeks. Okay, there are many ways to express the same idea in different ways. Puedes expresarlo diciendo un ejemplo directamente la cantidad de años que vos no has ocupado un uniforme. Puedes decirlo desde cuál fue el año que tú no estás ocupando un uniforme. Incluso puedes decir, eh, un ejemplo, el periodo exacto de tiempo o específico desde tal día hasta tal día que tú no ocupaste un uniforme. Lo que es el tiempo del pasado, es un tema bastante, bastante complejo, el cual pues lleva mucho, mucho cuidado poderlo manejar. Por eso necesito que hagan preguntas. Quiero ir a saber, si soy honesto, en serio si tenía muchas ganas de saber si todos ustedes tenían todas las dudas claras. ¿Por qué? Porque vamos a dejar de lado el presente para hablar del pasado. Solo en el primer video se han dado cuenta que descubrimos cuatro formas de hablar pasado, o tres al menos. Forma específica, forma continua, forma en que comenzaste en algún momento pero lo seguís haciendo, forma que vos lo, comes, lo hiciste en movimiento durante un lapso de tiempo en el pasado. Poder hablar diciendo desde qué año exacto tú comenzaste a hacer las cosas o para hacer de hacerlas. Y también lo puede decir la misma cosa diciendo solo el periodo de años que tú hiciste o dejaste de hacer tal cosa. Por esa razón, guys, eh, era que yo sí quería sacar todas las dudas posibles al respecto, que me parece excelente. Ahora bien, guys, el mismo video nos sigue explicando. Las expresiones. Como duty. Ok. You can say, for 
example. Uh, Raul was working on oil campero during the night. Durante una década él estuvo trabajando ahí. ¿Cómo lo podemos ocupar? Duty. And then, the expression will be also a decade, a year, a month. Pero aquí estamos especificando que durante ese periodo él hizo esto. Voy a traer las expresiones que nosotros tenemos aquí. Es since and for. During is like for. No. For es for. Aquí lo vamos a ocupar for. For. Así. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Es lo mismo. Estamos hablando exactamente de lo mismo. Si vos te fijas en esta parte. No hay ninguna diferencia. ¿Ven ustedes alguna diferencia en el subject, en el modal verb o incluso en el verbo? No, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es la gran diferencia? Que cuando vos decís since vas a dar el periodo de año, pero no estás dando, perdón, pero das el año. Exacto. Pero no estás hablando exactamente del periodo de año. ¿Qué va a hacer la persona? Va a comenzar como tú, va a comenzar como tú. Ahora bien, ¿qué hay sobre el for? El for te va a servir para expresarte no el año específico, sino el periodo de tiempo. Eh, podríamos decir... Un aproximado. Mm, no exactamente el, el año. Exacto, sería como un periodo, un aproximado. Tú vas a hacer que la persona haga la matemática para saber qué año fue. Un ejemplo, podría ser, eh, Morena has been working for 12 years in the same place. Sí, he estado trabajando durante 12 años en el mismo lugar. Ahora bien, pues si yo digo, hey, Morena has been working since 2011 in the same place. Has dicho lo mismo, con el mismo periodo de tiempo, con lo único que solo omitiste el año una, pero diste la cantidad. Ejemplo, aquí diste la cantidad que fueron 11 años. Y en esta dice el año que fue 2012. Todo depende de cómo quieras crear el contexto de la situación. Eh, si yo te pregunto a ti, eh, Morena, imagínate que tú estás ahorita en una reunión de trabajo. Se te acerca el cliente de tu trabajo, de tu cuenta. Ah, thank you so much, eh, Morena, for being here. Uh, let me know. Uh, how long has you been working here? Si te pregunto eso, tú tienes las dos opciones de decir, ¿no? ah. I have been working here for years, or I have been working here since 2012. Yeah, pregunta Morena. Yes, yeah, repeat it again. I'm so sorry because it's, okay. it's raining. I um, apologize for the inconvenience. It's okay, it's, Morena. It's not our fault, but. The natural, the, the, the raining, no, it's okay, no let me hear well. <laughs> no se preocupe, okay. Morena, lo voy a decir en español. Las la dos, las dos significan lo mismo. Las dos, usted yes. está hablando desde un punto de partida yeah. hasta uh -huh. ahora en día. Uh -huh. Con la única diferencia que con la primera usted le va a decir, ah, mire, yo comencé a trabajar en tal año. In a specific years, right? Come on. Uh -huh. Exacto. En cambio, con la otra, usted no le va a decir el específico año, pero sí le va ah, a decir. Ah, una próxima. 
For example, is is for for example, um, uh, for example, maybe some somebody asked me, hey, I look for several years here. Yes, I I have been working for um around for over uh ten years, eleven years, something like that, right? Si nosotros ocupamos el over aquí, pues sí está, está, está dando un aproximado. Pero uh -huh. si usted omite el over, usted va a decir lo mismo. Con la única diferencia que en la okay. primera usted le va a decir el año que usted comenzó uh -huh. hasta ahora el día. Yeah, Pero yeah. en el segundo usted solo le va a decir, ah, mira, 11 años son los que llevo aquí hasta el día uh -huh. de hoy. Okay. Una persona va a venir y decir, uy, son 11 años. Uh -huh. Es como cuando pasa esto, señorita Morena. Se ha fijado que de repente usted deja de ver niños y de repente los mira adolescentes y cuando le dice, mira, ¿qué uh -huh. tenés? Dice, ah, yo tengo 11 años. Pero si nosotros decimos el año cuando lo vimos por última vez, nosotros en el último corto el periodo, pero cuando uh -huh. nos pusimos 11, yes. pues, es una gran Yes, uh -huh. it happened, yeah. Es una forma de poder expresar. Muy bien, guys. Eh, ya nos hemos pasado dos minutos. Eh, vamos a dejar la clase hasta aquí y el día de lunes seguiremos hablando un poco más. Regreso en tiempo y les pido de favor, participen. El llamado, no, felicito al señor Raúl, Morena, Yancy y Maybe, que han sido las, y Yulisa, no olvido de Yulisa, que han sido las personas que más han participado este día. Hermano, gracias. Bye bye. Thank you, Chair. Bye. 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 Bye.